Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys four tricks that I use in Photoshop to spice up my photos and make my portraits perfect. We're gonna be using this image that I took right here and turning it into this final image in just a few simple steps. So let's hop into Photoshop and get this thing going. So I start off every photo in Adobe Lightroom Classic. This is the program I use to make all of the color adjustments to my photos. So the first thing that I do to the raw image is apply one of my signature Sebi Clemens Vision presets. I usually just scroll through and see which one looks best or works best with the image. Personally, I like this one here. I think that looks great. Now I could get crazy here in Lightroom, but this isn't a Lightroom tutorial. This is a Photoshop tutorial. So what I'm gonna do is right click here and put edit in Adobe Photoshop. I'm gonna click that right there. It'll take us straight into Photoshop. All right, so now we are in Photoshop. The first thing that I always do before I make any adjustments in Photoshop is press Command J on my keyboard and make a duplicate layer of the photo so that I can make all of my adjustments on this layer and then have the original to go back to and see how much I've changed. So the first trick and adjustment that I do to every single photo that I work on is doing touch-ups. So I'm gonna press J on my keyboard. That's going to bring me to my spot healing brush tool or you can find it on the toolbar. You can use your bracket keys to change the size of the brush that is being used. So I can come in here and pretty much just draw over any little blemishes or dots that I see to remove them and Photoshop will remove them. It's literally like magic, super cool. So I'm gonna take out some of these little things, clean up some stuff around her cheeks. Personally I think that looks good for the skin. I like to come up to the hair as well. It's a great tool for stray hairs. So you guys can see she has some little blonde hairs showing. I'm gonna just kind of take those out a little bit, remove those so they're not getting in the way. Come over, she has some little spots that we're gonna also remove. And then checking any other areas of the skin and just removing those. All right, bam, so the skin looks good. Everything's clear, ready to go. You can do super detailed things with the skin such as dodge and burn and frequency separation to make the skin just look like it hops straight out of magazine. But for now, this is the simplest way to remove blemishes and get the skin looking perfect. And of course, zooming out on the photo, you can check to see if there's any distractions or things in the background. You can use this same spot healing brush tool, drag over it and remove any distractions in the background as well. So for example, we have like these two little yellow pieces of the plant that kind of take away for the overall green. We just wanna take those out. It makes it look good. You can see a little bit of her jeans are sticking out from her denim. You can take those out as well. It just helps clean the image up. Those small details really add up together. So the next thing that I like to do is going to be eye adjustments. Now this is super fun for people that have green eyes or blue eyes or just really bright eyes. Enhancing their eyes and making them just have that sparkle in them even more is always super fun to do and it really enhances your photo. So as you guys can see, she has blue eyes, which is perfect. So we want to enhance these just a little bit. I come down, click this little half circle thingy and we're going to come up to brightness and contrast. And then I'm going to press this thing, which is just going to hook it to the layer. But what I'm gonna do is just bump up the brightness here on this image, and then maybe the contrast. You can see it's affecting the whole image. We just want it to affect the eyes. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that this little white square is selected. I'm gonna press Command or Control I on my keyboard. It's going to invert that mask and make it all black. I'm gonna then come to the brush tool by pressing B on the keyboard or finding it here on the side panel. And then I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make sure that I have a soft brush selected because the hard one just looks unnatural. So I like to use the soft brush and zoom in a little bit on her eyes. And then I'm gonna make sure that my brush is set to white here. You can press X on your keyboard and it'll swap out those colors between black and white. But you wanna make sure that white is the top color there. So every time you draw white on a black layer, it's going to reveal that adjustment that you made, as you guys can see. So what I'm gonna do is just do it to the eyes. So I'm gonna just come in here and just paint around the eyes in the blue area. I'll do the same here. And bam. I suggest not doing the blacks of the eyes because it usually starts to turn into gray and it just looks like you brightened up the whole eye, when in reality, it should just be the colored part of the eye that is bright. 
You can zoom out, you guys can see that looks a little too bright, a little too unnatural. So what I'm gonna do is just bring the brightness down just a little bit and you guys can see when I adjust that layer, it just affects the eyes, which is really cool. Now bring those down a little bit, maybe add a little bit more contrast, which will add some detail. You also wanna take note that if there's shadows on the face, so we can see that this side of her face has some dark shadows on it. So this eye is gonna be darker than this left eye here. So just take that into account. If you wanna erase that or maybe make that a little bit darker, you can. But for this image, I think that looks pretty good. Enhancing the eyes and making them a little bit brighter just always gives more soul to the image. And it's a super easy and cool trick that you can use to spice up your portraits. So for this next adjustment, we're gonna be using Liquify to move shapes and things around in the image. I'm gonna make sure that my layer here is selected, and then I'm gonna come up to Filter and then do Liquify, and that's gonna bring me in this Liquify panel. Now, you have a brush here, and you wanna make sure that it's at this top one with the Forward Warp tool, and pretty much you click and drag, and it'll move parts of your image. So you can see if you click and drag, it really makes your image look crazy. But what we can do is use this to mold and shape her hair. Now a lot of girls like to curl their hair for photo shoots, so this is perfect for just enhancing curls and adding volume to the hair. I like to call this the digital hairstylist. I'm gonna come here and make my brush just a little bit bigger. I'm gonna just kind of drag and pull up the tops of her hair here. And that's just gonna add a little bit of volume, as you guys can see. And again, just adjusting little parts of her hair. Maybe there's some pieces that you wanna pull in because they stick out too much. Maybe there's some curls that you wanna enhance. So this one, for example, I'm just gonna bring it and pull it down a little bit. So we have more hair and more curl there. This curl here looks a little too bent, so I'm gonna kinda just pull it in a little bit and adjust the shape and size of it. All right, so let's just take this preview off so we can see what we did. You guys can see just that small adjustment of the hair. It just makes the hair look that much better, like it was purposefully styled. If the wind's blowing the hair in a certain way and you wanna fix it, this is a really good trick to do so. You can also use Liquify on other elements. Let's say I wanna make these mountains in the back bigger. I can also use Liquify to do that. So I can make my brush just a little bit bigger and then just kind of stretch these mountains out a little bit. You just want to be careful if you're around, you know, parts of the subject. You don't want to affect the subject, but just bumping up these mountains, making them a little more pointy, a little more majestic. You can see that before and after looks really good. So you can also do this on clothes. Let's say there's some wrinkles or maybe your clothes look too baggy or something like that. You can use that as well. So let's say I wanted to remove this little wrinkle in her shirt. I can literally just push it in a little bit and kind of make it more flat. All right, I think that looks good. And then we're gonna just press okay. And that should be it for our liquify. Now guys, I'll be honest. I've been up editing photos and doing creative work all day long. And the one thing that's kept me going is this coffee that I've been drinking right here. Now this is the Nitro Cold Brew Coffee by New Mexico Pinon Coffee, which is the sponsor of today's video. Now I'm super excited because I've been drinking Pinon coffee for years now and they are a legendary company here in the state of New Mexico where I'm from. Pinon coffee has been a powerhouse in the coffee scene for decades now with their unique Southwest inspired flavors like Mexican spiced chocolate, traditional Pinon, and my personal favorite, the Biscochito coffee, which is inspired by New Mexico's state cookie, the Biscochito, which is a delicious cinnamon sugar spice cookie with tons of flavor. Their Biscochito coffee is my go-to every time I get Pinon and it literally tastes like a cookie. Now, although Pinon coffee is locally roasted in Albuquerque, New Mexico, they do sell their coffee online and ship to all 50 states in the US. Go check out their website in the description down below and use code SEBICOFFEE23 for a special discount at checkout. They have tons of options for every coffee lover, including bundles and gift boxes, which come with their most popular flavors so you can try them all. If you guys want a great gift for your family this holiday season or a coffee connoisseur like I am, go get yourself some Pinon coffee. I promise you won't regret it. For this fourth trick, we're gonna spice up our photo and take it to the next level by affecting the blur and the bokeh in the background. All right, so I'm gonna take these two layers and actually just group them together and then just merge that group into one photo so we have the eyes set into the image. And then I'm gonna make another copy of that original photo. I'm gonna right click this layer and convert to smart object. 
Now what that's going to do is make this layer a smart object, meaning that it's non-destructible. So if I apply any filters or things on top of it, I can actually go back and edit that or remove it completely. I'm going to come up to filter here and we're going to select the blur category and then we'll do a radial blur. Now the radial blur is a secret of mine. It's something I've been using for a while now in my photos to get a unique background bokeh. And this is just such a unique and super cool trick if done properly. So we can see we have a couple settings here. You want to make sure that the blur is in the center if your subject is in the center. There's two different modes that you can use. You can do zoom method, which will have the image kind of pool towards the center. And then there's the spin, which makes the background kind of wobbly and look circular. And then there's the quality. Of course, I always put it on best because we want the best quality. You can change the amount. So let's say we put it at 10, press OK. It's on zoom. You guys can see it kind of zooms in on the center of the image. So I'm gonna select this white box right here, which is actually a mask, and it works the same way that we did the eyes earlier. I'm gonna press Command I and invert that mask so it takes away the blur, and then I'm gonna press B, come back to my brush, make it a little bit bigger. And what I'm gonna do is paint back in that blur only in the areas that I want. So she's sitting in this field, and what I'm thinking is blurring out this field. So let's just kind of paint over this field and maybe a little bit of the background. You guys can see that this just draws your eye immediately to the subject. I think this looks sick. You could call it a day right here, have that be the finished image, but let's try it with a spin blur as well, just so you guys can see. I set this to a spin blur, press okay. So you guys can see it has this cool little effect, but that's a little overkill, a little too much. So I'm going to just double click that radial blur and then you could literally just adjust it. That's why we made this layer a smart object earlier so we can go back and edit and change it in case we don't like it. I usually like to do two or three for my radial blurs. It's just the right amount. There you go. Look at that. So you want it to be super subtle. You don't want it to be too crazy. We could even do two because three might be too much. Yeah, I think two is perfect. So two adds that cool effect to the leaves. I like to add a spin blur to photos that have plants and trees and bushes. It just adds a cool effect and it makes them look stretched out and it mimics the look of an anamorphic lens. Anamorphic lenses are used in film all the time and they are an oval lens rather than a circular lens and they have a few unique characteristics including those blue lens flares as well as oval bokeh in the background and oftentimes depending on the anamorphic lens the background can even look like it has a spin blur on it and everything's kind of circular pointing towards the subject, which is what we're pretty much mimicking here, just in digital on a photo. I think this looks super cool and it adds that anamorphic style and flair to your photo and makes it look just a little bit more cinematic. All right, so that should be the finished image right there. I think it looks really cool. I like to use these tricks in all of my portrait photos that I do. And if you guys wanna see more of my photography, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Sebi Clemens. I'm gonna be posting a lot more tips and tricks on there. And huge thank you to Pinon Coffee for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you guys go get a bag of coffee or a gift box down below in the description using code SEBICOFFEE23. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to leave a like and share with your friends if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new and I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces. Don't forget to stay creative. Woo!